New York City, the center of global economy and culture. The city shows off its glamour that benefits its fame. However, if you go slightly beyond Midtown Manhattan, you will come across a unique neighborhood that is different from other parts of Manhattan. It's Harlem. Here, the demographic is mostly African Americans and Hispanics. Recently, a school here has gained much prestige among students in this area. It's the Democracy Prep Charter School. We now have what? How do we say that? This Don't school for grades 1 to 12 opened in 2006 and has a short history. However, the classrooms are filled with passion for learning. The teachers and students look very serious and passionate as they carry on with the lesson. As you said, it was LaShawn. How do we say that again? Even though front row that thinks I can't see them, pencils are in the group. Can you call one of your haters to hear about how they Matthews? It would be, I believe, the opposite of X, Y. Axis, which is number two, so the opposite of number two is two. Lewis, call on someone. They only have one goal, to attend college. To achieve that, they ceaselessly push ahead. And their hard work is now beginning to pay off. You've all heard work The school has produced 45 graduates in just seven years since its inception. Everyone has been accepted to a university. Even UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is here at their graduation to celebrate their achievement. Congratulations again. They were able to accomplish such a feat thanks to the Korean-style teaching methods. Since its foundation, the school has implemented a Korean-style education system and has continued that to this day. First started when we first started Democracy Prep, there were a lot of hallmarks that came from Seth Andrew, our founder's time in South Korea. Um, certainly our commitment to um, a structured school environment was one of them, um, but uh, the way it got started was Seth's very personal experience in, in teaching in Korea in our schools is actually because it, of what it does for our scholars, which is to put them on a different path than scholars that are um, in high-performing schools like ours, um, but are learning Spanish or French or even Mandarin. Our kids are set apart by learning Korean. The teaching method here is a new method that is a cross between the American and Korean teaching methods. Within uh, the Korean sort of education, um, there's a real respect and reverence for learning. Um, there's a real respect and reverence for the teacher as the purveyor of knowledge. Uh, and I think there's a real reverence for um, a certain type of educational environment that um, expects students to be serious, uh, to be hardworking, um, and to really value their studies. Uh, and I think our pedagogy here really uh, tries to infuse a lot of that into the way we run our schools. Placing importance on rules, smartly scheduling classes from early morning to evening, the teachers being devoted to their students, and the students respecting their teachers. As you can see, they have adopted only the strong points of Korean-style education. In this school, Korean is a mandatory subject that must be taken for a student to graduate. When she learned the path of green paper, didn't she? In this school, Korean is a mandatory subject that must be taken for a student to graduate. Although Korean is completely different from English, the students do not waver in learning it. The students are serious and sincere as they learn Korean. At our school, our students are learning Korean as the only foreign language course, and that is not elective, that is actually a core class. Our students are expected to learn four years of Korean before they graduate. They have to pass all four years of Korean. The reason that we set the bar really high, unlike other high schools that requires only one year of a foreign language course, take the Korean LUT exam, which is a language other than English exam, as a graduation exam, just like a regency exam in New York. 
What I like about learning Korean language is the fact that it's totally different from the language that I'm used to in my native language back home from Awe. Um, the Korean language has the verb at the end of the sentence and it's different because, you know, in America you have the subject and then you have the verb. And then when I'm back home, my native language, Awe, is also the verb comes after the subject. So those are like two different distinctions, but at the same time, now that I know like the verb comes at the end, I'm able to speak it more fluently to other Korean people. And where is it facing up or down? Korean style teaching continues even after school. This after school program that teaches traditional Korean culture is very popular among the students. Today, we're going to learn about Kangang Sule, a traditional dance Korean women used to enjoy. Although it's a simple dance where you hold hands and go around in a big circle, the kids, who are all experiencing this for the first time, are excited. In addition to having fun, it's also a novel experience for these kids to learn the sentiments unique to Korean culture. And they come to this class and they study Korean dance, they study the K-pop, and they're studying the poetry. I have a group of students who couldn't make it today who love the poetry, who love expressing themselves using the Korean style, using the Korean meter, using the Korean shijo. Learning to be open towards and acceptive of different cultures. I believe this is the most important thing that Korean style education teaches. Korean style education is heading toward a new era. Unlike the past when entering college was the top priority and only goal, now Korean education is progressing toward a creative education that lets the children explore their dreams and talents. New York City where global trends are born. A new trend is sweeping through Harlem, the home of hip hop. Kids are dancing. They are fully focused on Korea's traditional music. From the tips of their fingers down to their toes, they carefully move to the music. It's been nine months since they first began to learn the Korean dance with their teacher, Karen. By learning to perform the traditional Korean dance, which requires the harmony of the body and soul, Karen and her students even shared a surprising experience. Hold on, then you're all going to take a step back to for Gina and Yatna. The most amazing thing, in fact, before when you were videotaping, Yatna was explaining to the students the fundamental of the breath, the ho hep and the tension, forgive my accent. And and it's just those wonderful realizations when they look and they say, ah, oh, I get it. And it's the same experience I had maybe a few years ago. But they get it in nine months because I hopefully have explained it to them in a way they can understand. Karen is actually a big fan of traditional Korean dances. So much so that she even participated in the World Korean Traditional Music Competition three times. She wanted to share the moving experience with her students. It's something that I've found very interesting because I've seen different types of dancing and none of them caught my ass much as this did. Um, when it comes to Spanish dancing, it's much more quick, uh, more quick and then more focused on the feet. But when it comes to Korean dancing, it's much more focused on your movements of your arms, your legs and breathing, which I find much more simpler since um, I do a lot of swimming, which helps with my breathing exercises. You want to be the tail today? Who wants to be the leader? Okay, Jordan, right here then. The students are falling deeper in love with the traditional Korean music as they learn the traditional Korean melody, lyrics, and moves. The harmonious moves become art itself. It is the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced. It's a physical beauty, it's an emotional beauty. There's nothing like it. There is nothing like Korean dance, nothing. Jazz can't do it, ballet can't do it. No other folk form can do this. 